Thank you for tuning in to TalkWan.com, the world's fastest growing internet radio network. Please check out all the other great shows on www.talkwad.com. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. She has a wonderful personality. She really does. You are listening to Talking with Gloria. Let's take a walk on the wild side. With your host, Gloria Ponziano. host Gloria Ponziano and joining me tonight in the studio is Mike Labua from Elite Body Personal Training here in Palm Harbor. Hi Mike. How are you doing Gloria? Great. Welcome to the studio. Thanks once again, again. Once again. Always Mike is our expert, our fitness expert on demand and he has come to answer your questions, give us some great advice. I told you that we were going to be talking fitness and health today and that's exactly what we're going to start out doing. But before I do, I just want to make a quick announcement that For those of you that are interested in the tapping your inner power, we're going to be having another meeting here in Clearwater on April 20th. That's Saturday at 11 o'clock. And you can go to my website and check out the events calendar and find out all the information you need, the address, the time, and how you go about making payments. So make sure you join us for tapping your inner power. And I'll be bringing the event myself. So make sure you join us. Okay, Mike. So let's uh, today. You said that we're going to be talking about debunking myths. Yes, there's a lot of myths out there in the industry with with fitness and building a body. And uh, the most probably the most common one is is dealing with the midsection, your abdominal wall. Okay, um, you see a lot of people that, that tend to hold a lot of weight there, and thinking that to get that protrusion down, you know, that big belly down there, they, they're going to just do a bunch of crunches or sit-ups until the cows come home, so to speak. And that will not do anything as far as flattening out that tummy, okay? It's, so you cannot spot reduce. Um, it'll come through, or actually you'll burn, you need to burn it off through cardio and eating properly, okay? If you do the abs crunches, you're going to strengthen that muscle group, that area, but it's, it's not going to take that protrusion away. You're always going to have that body fat there. So um, crunches are not the answer. It's getting that cardio in burning those calories, and eating correctly. Not starving yourself, but eating correctly. You must feed the body. You know, that's a good point because I don't go anywhere where somebody doesn't ask if we start talking about fitness. They'll say, oh, how do you do? You know, I'm doing 100, 500 at a time, sit-ups at a time, and they just really don't understand that it's the abdominal wall that you want to see, and you can't see the abdominal wall until you get rid of the body fat that's on that. Right. Good nutrition. What do you recommend? Now, see, that's something, that's another myth. Well, I don't want to say a myth, but it's it's definitely a misnomer that yes, the less yes. you eat, the more weight you're going to lose. Right. And that is a problem in this country big, big, time. big, time. big time. Why don't you address that? Yes. Um, yeah, starving the body or reducing the calories. Uh, it, it, the scale weight will go down eventually, but then you're going to hit a set point. And uh, then you're going to have to just start bringing more calories down again to bring the scale down. But what you're doing is you're just burning the muscle that you do have on the body away. You know, so um, you're that uh, you're that skinny fat person, so to speak, is what you're going to become. You're not any more fit. You don't feel any better. Um, you're lighter on the scale, but you must feed the body. Uh, otherwise, um, yeah, it will just melt away muscle as well. The scale goes down, and eventually you hit a set point. Oh my God, I'm eating a thousand calories, and I go down to seven hundred. Seven hundred becomes five hundred, and and before you know, you just you're starving yourself. Forget working out. You know, you're not going to have any energy for that because you're not eating. You know, so I, I so wish that we could do something in our country to stop this um, this madness of people being so consumed with what the scale tells them. And, and, and I mean, there's a balance with everything, obviously. We, we both know that. But there's so much of the um, weight issues as far as, like, like you said, what the scale is telling them. That's really all they're consumed with. 
and they're not realizing that i mean remember when kieran carpenter died from yes, anorexia yes, we all yes. remember well some yep. of us remember that sure. and we're dating ourselves a little bit but when she died of anorexia i mean here you have this bone skinny person and the heart just grew too weak there was no yep. exercise involved there was actual starvation and americans are doing that all the time yes. simply by going from say seven eight o'clock in the morning when they grab a donut or they grab coffee and they're going on that stimulant of caffeine all day long and then when it comes to lunch they'll have a small salad and then they crash Correct. about three o'clock and they need something sweet to pick them up right I deal with that a little bit uh, well again as we've talked on shows in the past that um the best way to to defeat that is is to eat <laughs> believe it or not you want to graze like the horse you know so you want to eat throughout the day every three hours it can be two hours if there are smaller meals, like a protein shake or a meal replacement shake. It's a liquid, so two hours later you can eat again. And that, what that does, it keeps that metabolism just, just cooking like it was when we were 18 years old. You know, nothing sticks and you, you're just reeling. Now that metabolism will slow down as we get older. Our activity level also slows down. That's a fact there too. So you got that double whammy going on there too. You're not active and your metabolism is slowing way down and, and then now your body's just storing that fat when you do eat. If you teach the body, here comes nutrition every three hours and you're working out, you're going to use that, that nutrition is going to be used for energy. You know, it's like that fire that we talked about a couple of sessions back and that fire is going out. You throw that another log on that thing to keep it burning. You're going to treat your metabolism the same way. You don't want it to just shut down. Okay. And go into a survival mechanism because the body will do that. If you don't feed it, it doesn't know when it's going to be fed again. It's not taught. It's going to store it. I may have to live off that meal. I'm going to store that thing away here. And it's not, so that's, that's basically what's, what's going to happen there. But if you teach, here comes every three hours, the body will know that it's not going to store anything. You're going to be able to use that as fuel for your workouts or for your activities, that you, you, whatever you do that you, during the day that you enjoy doing. Yeah. Now, talk a little bit when you said when you're training your body to have fuel coming into it every three to four hours. I've been doing that for years and years and years because, you know, most of my listeners know that I used to be doing this for a living um, back in Chicago. And my body got used to it. And I, even when I wasn't working out, I couldn't go beyond three or four hours. Right, right. And if I had a dollar for every time somebody would say to me, you have diabetes that you have to eat all the time. Right. So do you want to address that to yeah. make? <laughs> well, you know, it's funny you, you say that. Um, one of our clients about three, four years back, um, she, she's a diabetic, um, self-administered and, uh, had a baby, and six months after having a baby, decides, uh, very, very fit gal, um, decided she would like to do a figure show. It's like a bodybuilding show, but scaled down. Um, the dieting is less severe on that. Uh, she won her class. She won, she won the whole thing, actually, the whole show. Um, but before her starting, I told her that uh, you, the, easy, the hardest part, you got it, you got it licked already because you understand about the meals have to come in because of being a diabetes. You can't let that, you can't crash. You got to keep that going. So she's so used to doing that. That's the hardest part is the eating, getting that down. So she had that in her, you know, in, in her, her pocket brain. already right there. Mm -hmm. So you don't change nothing. You know, that's exactly how you're going to eat to get ready for this show here. Keep coming with the protein, carbs in check, um, some good healthy fat. And uh, Now our listeners, some of our listeners yep. might not know what you're talking about when you say eat protein and keep mm -hmm. those carbs in check. Right. So right. Yep. the carbs in check, yes. what you're talking about is say, for example, 25 grams of protein with about 20 grams of carbs. Yeah, yeah, just, you don't want to have too many more carbs than protein? Right. Yeah, you don't want to have too many carbs more than protein. Unless you're a marathon runner or triathlete, you know, then, then the pasta is going to be there purposely, a higher carbs for that athlete. But for your typical person um, looking just to feel better, um, just a better quality of life, the carbs in check means, and I say that in check because carbs, that's fuel for the body, energy. And it, ha it has a bad rap because our nation is so infatuated with, with the pastas and the, and the pizza dough and everything. It's just excessive carbs, and the excessive carbs are just going to convert into fat anyhow. That's why I say keep it in check because it does have a purpose, but it's, it's, it's labeled as the enemy, you know, no carbs. You got no fuel, no energy. You can't even, you're not going to be able to even think straight. You know, you just go on all a protein diet. You're, you're seeing double after a while. It's, it's, it's not a good thing foggy to do. Thinking. Foggy you know, thinking. You're getting that yep. foggy thinking. You're getting lethargic. You're yep. getting run down and everything. You don't just make the connection at all. Right. Right. Now, what about um, as, as far as like other supplements mm -hmm. that you would recommend for somebody that's training hard, right. that's in the gym a minimum of three times a week? Yep. What, you know, we hear so much about uh, creatine mm -hmm. and 
do women need to take that? No. Because that's one of the questions right. that, that came in to me this week. Uh, do women so address right. that? Yeah, well, creatine, it's a cell volumizer. Uh, it, it's going to build muscle. It's gonna, it'll, it'll, and naturally, it'll, it'll put some weight. You get on the scale, you, your weight will go up as well. And so it's got a place in the industry for, for those athletes that if that's their goal, you know, but, but uh, a female, most of the times they don't want to put muscle size on. And I hear it all the time. Don't make my arms too big, <laughs> which will never happen. You got to eat big to get big. And that's another whole topic there. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, the creatine, um, you, you, you go to a nutrition store, they're going to sell you the creatine. They're not going to even care to ask who's using it. Why, why do you need it? Um, it's just a sale to them and it's a proven supplement, but it's not for, for anyone, you have to find out that individual's goals first before you prescribe something like that. But it's a proven supplement. It's uh, it does work. It'll strengthen. The, it, it'll bring your strength up, uh, size up as well too. And again, most females they're not concerned with that. So creatine probably isn't the best thing for them. Okay. Do you recommend it for the guys though? Uh, again, I do for the guys that they're uh, they're looking for strength would would help them as as a like a football player, um, fighter, MMA fighter. A boxer, maybe two, depending, like a heavyweight, because it, it's going to bring some power along with it, which which sometimes you want that in your arsenal as far as depending on what athletics you're doing, you know, but it's not for everyone as well, too. You know, you have a, maybe a swimmer or somebody that needs to be lean and quick. You know, that, that's just going to be like luggage, that, that, that extra muscle that's on the body, and it's, it's actually going to be counterproductive. All right, we are, we're just bunking some of the myths that are out there. What are some of the most popular ones that you see? I would say the top three or four. Obviously, we just yeah. covered the abs, yeah, the abs sure. and the eating. Yep. And yep. what is another one that's okay. real popular? Uh, another one is, you know, I have uh, in, my, in my studio uh, these machines that work the adductor, which is inner thigh, abductor, which is the outer thigh. Okay? And he will hear this term all the time if I put a guy in those machines to use them. That's a chick machine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's labeled because, again, Right, the gals when they tend to hold the weight, they call the saddlebags right on the in, at the outside of the hips, and uh, again, that spot reduced that we talked about earlier in the show here it, is that's not the answer. So they think the girls are going to get in there and just work those inner thighs, the outer thighs to tighten everything up, and that's not the case because you cannot spot reduce as well. But there are muscles that need to be worked. Those are your stabilizers. You know, for a squat, when you squat, you got quadriceps is your primary. Your glutes help out a lot. Hamstrings assist. But those stabilizers, like having a house, your foundation are working as well. So you want to keep those stabilizers strong. So that's the purpose of those, those machines for those exercises. But it's not going to bring that area down and, and, uh, and, and just uh, disintegrate that body fat that's there. So guys should be using those Absolutely. machines Absolutely. Guys well. should be using as well. Absolutely. I got to say, I would probably smile a little bit if I saw a guy on one of those machines. I'm just not used to seeing yeah, that, you know, right, and I'll, yeah. I'm just being honest. I'm not used yeah. to seeing, but you're right. I mean, they have to work every muscle group in the body as well. I'd be surprised <laughs> if you see a lot of guys just training legs. Uh, we talked about this yeah, I know. in general, you know, because it is work and it's a cop out that these guys, a lot of them don't. They'll train upper body. They got a decent physique up top and they got these bird legs going on and uh, you know they'll, they're happy to wear a pair of pants and, and be okay with it but that's a, that's a cop out to me um training legs is it's the hardest thing to do because it's your large muscle groups your heart rate is through the roof if you're doing them correctly um you should almost feel you're right on that cusp of maybe feeling a little nauseous there where you, you know you feel like you're gonna maybe pass out <laughs> i've you know i've had that before um and me personally if i don't feel that way at the end of the leg workout i'm kind of disappointed because i, I know i want to push it as, as hard as i can so um, that's what the legs will bring you, and, and that's why a lot of people. Yeah, he uh, liked guys to kill me to, yesterday. Yeah. I just want to let you know <laughs> yeah. it was leg day, yeah. and and I've got two leg days this week, and yes. he just about killed me. <laughs> got to do it, yeah. But uh, the nice thing about it is, um, because it's a large muscle group, you're you're burning that many more calories. You know, you can do biceps and curl and curl. You're gonna burn, but when you start squatting or leg pressing using those quads and glutes, heart rate is through the roof, and uh, you, you're burning calories. That's amazing too, and I love. Uh, most of this stuff that we're talking about, we may be repeating ourselves, but mm -hmm. there's a point to it. And that's yeah. that you need to hear what's, what's right, what's wrong. Right. And that is so amazing to me because the workouts that you've been giving me, mm -hmm. um, really do keep me on my toes. Right. And we were talking about ab work and we hardly ever do right. ab work. Right. And yet my stomach is getting flatter than it's right. ever been right. in the last several Believe years. Me, it's working. Whew. Yeah. yeah, here's a great thing too. It happened today. I had a gal that I was training, and we changed up some some things where her abs were sore. So 
oh my gosh, my abs are sore. But we're doing things you would think that has nothing to do with abs. A tricep push down, a shoulder press. We could not believe how sore her abs were that she felt them during those exercises. Mm -hmm. You see, that's what I'm talking about. They are involved, but because you don't feel them, you don't think, oh, they're they're not working. They're working. What what is the bench that you have, the the rounded bench that you have at the gym? What is that called? I mean, is there a specific specific name for it no actually it's uh it, it, there's a name that they call it uh you know, it's just it's just a it's manufacturing just a bench, name, but it's and a it's bench got like a rounded it, it, yeah. it's kind of like gel it's yeah. almost it kind of reminds you of a yeah. bosi ball how the bosi ball is right. kind of rounded on it's one a, end a real thick bladder that's on yeah. that thing yeah and it's, it is full of air it's elongated like a bench um as Gloria was saying the bosi ball is round this one is elongated so you can lay down on that thing and do crunches off it chest press um, you can stand on the thing as well. Well, too. that's what I was going to bring up when you were talking about her being sore and not having any ab work done. He had me stand on this bench, and then we were using the bands, correct? Yeah, bands and, at one time, and the other time we did free weights. Right, yeah. right, yeah. free weights. That's what it was. It was free weights. I was standing on the bench, and you had me doing curls, but it was engaging my core, mm-hmm. all of my core, and just to keep my balance on this thing right. while I was doing these curls. And then sure enough, the next day when I went to get out of bed, I'm like, owie, yes. owie, owie. Yep. And I came back, I'm like, I don't know why my abs were yeah. this sore. And didn't do any crunches or anything. Oh, nope. That's all it took there. You know, with, with that concept there, when you're out balancing and then you, you have an overload, she was doing a bicep curl, 30, 35 pound barbell in hand. So it's out in front. So what that weight wants to do is pull her off the bench because she's elevated. She's up on a bench right now. That weight wants to pull her off. So what's keeping her back to stay there and then be able to perform the exercise is the core, you know, and uh, that's, that's the neatest thing. A shoulder press you can do well as well too with one arm. So now you're overloading your body on one side. You got a 20 pound dumbbell on here. You're standing straight up. If you were able to just to shut off your core, you would fall right off the ball. You would just whoop. But because for you to stay up erect as you're doing that shoulder press, your core is, is in play right there. It has to be. Otherwise, you know. that that's amazing, and that's something too that we need to talk about is some of the uh, misnomers about back, why the lower back is going mm-hmm. out, and here is a very very common one. And for those of you that have asked me this question, I'm finally remembering to ask Mike, and that is, people that sit all day at their computers complain a lot about knee pain. How is the knee and the back, the lower back, connected as far as why they're getting because I spoke with a chiropractor mm-hmm. and he said that most, and this is not me, because yep. thank God my back has always been very strong, but he said that the knee pain actually comes from the lower back right. being weak. out of alignment. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and just weak. Yes. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's the big thing, weak, and talking about, yeah, um, well, not so much a myth, but an excuse of people. And actually, when, when clients come in, we do an assessment on, in each client and find out limitations, um, if they had any surgery, knees, things like that, too, so you can customize the workout for them, you know, on their, um, on what they have going on. And uh, a lot of the guys, you know, with, with the bellies going on, they have a bad lower back. And I said, bad lower back, what do you mean? Slip disc, herniated disc? No, no, it's just, it's just, it hurts all the time. So structurally, there's nothing really wrong with the back. It's just, it's, it's just weak. And a back, again, we were talking about with standing on the ball, you got that overload up front of that belly that's just pulling as you're walking around on that spine, you know, and it's, so it's constantly fighting. You're not doing any exercising to strengthen those erector spinae muscles that are two thick muscles that run right alongside your spine on the lower back. Uh, so, so now it's, it's, it's just a weak lower back that's aching all the time. So what we do, and I do with those clients, they say bad lower back. There's nothing wrong with the back. We drop some, some of the, bo- the body fat in the area. We strengthen that area. All of a sudden, their back problems are gone. Very true. And, and then also, like you said, the knees, um, Tight glutes will create the lower back also to tighten up as well too, and right on down to the hamstrings, right to your knees as well. So you, that's why movement is so important, and you need to keep those muscles strong um, to, to eliminate some of this pain. Um, one of the things, I was uh, out to lunch today with a friend of mine, Don Martin. Hi, Don, And she and I were talking about the fact that we have to be very, very conscious now of slumped shoulders. Mm -hmm. We're all starting to lose our posture because, I mean, even you and I, as we are sitting here in this chair, this chair is actually designed for us to slump, to round our shoulders, as you can see. Yeah, Yeah. it's nice and comfy, but if you're sitting in this all day long at a computer or television or whatever you Mm -hmm. may be doing at a desk, you are 
leaning forward. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for people that are in, and I know yeah. you're going to say the ball, yeah, the but ball. if sure. their boss won't let them bring it, because yeah. some, I did get an email from somebody asked, saying, well, you know, what can you do if your boss won't let you bring in one of those right. balls? It's a great yeah. idea. Any suggestions? Yeah. Um, well, if you can have that ball, not even at your desk, probably because it's envisioned of customers coming in, not like, like the way it looks, it's being unprofessional, but you want, uh, if you can have that Swiss ball in your arsenal somewhere in, in like a break room or something, where now you're sitting like Glory was saying up front, you want to get be able to sit on that ball, work yourself out, so your lower back is at the highest point of that Swiss ball. Swiss ball, it looks like a big beach ball. It's totally round. And, and do like a, a backward bridge over that ball. So now you're working the antagonist because everything's pulling forward, and you're just going to go stretch the opposite way and work on that um, throughout the day, and that, that'll definitely help. Help, help that posture to counteract everything coming forward. Okay, what about uh, people working out five, six, seven days a week? Yeah. Um, how about the overkill? Uh, yeah, well, uh, overtraining, it's, more is not better. Um, you see these people two hours, spending two hours at the gym, coming five, six, seven times a week. Um, you're, especially as we get older now, too, you, you, your muscles need time to, for muscle repair and recovery. So what people, the misconception, think you grow in the gym, Okay. You don't grow in the gym. You get a pump in the gym, so you look in the mirror, you like the way your arms look. Um, you, know, you, you feel like, wow, I'm going to come back and do arms again tomorrow. Worst thing you can do. Because you're in the gym to damage muscle. And it sounds bad, but you want to break down muscle fiber. Break it down. And then you want to give it time to recover. And sleeping correctly enough, eating will help that come along. Supplements as well, too. If you're just going to come back in, and before they even bond it to get strong and break them down again, you're going to what we call overtraining where you're constantly achy sore. It's a whole different type of, of just a muscle soreness. Muscle soreness we enjoy. It's fun. Mm -hmm. you sit down, your glutes are sore. Yeah. Um, yeah. Aye, aye, aye. Aye. Yeah. But um, this is like a, almost like a flu-like system. Everything's achy. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, you're going to stop going to the gym. You're throwing the towel. You're done. And that's what's happening. You just set yourself up for failure there. So it becomes counterproductive by going in there too much. When you're younger, 18 years old, you can train chest three times a week and still grow like a weed. Um, young, you know, say a young man too with a the testosterone, their muscle repair recovery is much quicker, you know, and they're resilient too. If they do get injured or so, and they bounce right back. As we get older, you got to be smarter. So muscle repair recovery is even more important. You get it done, give yourself that time to recover, hit it again. Um, things like massages are also helped for the muscle repair and recovery, and it's preventative as well too. You want to get on that table for the massage to help repair, so you don't have an injury. Most people wait; they have an injury. Yeah. Before they get on the table. That's true. But getting on there frequently will prevent that. It'll prevent the injuries and you'll have better, much better workouts. Now, what about the people that, um, again, we're debunking myths or mis misunderstandings, mm -hmm. and that is the person that says, oh, I couldn't get to the gym today, so I'm going to be there three hours. Mm -hmm. No good. No good. No, Why is it no, no good? No good. Again, you're into overtraining. After you go over 40, 50 minutes of just training on, on the muscle, you're going to go beyond the uh, – the positive part of, of that workout and start, it's going to start becoming counterproductive. So three hours, it, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's unhealthy for the body. It's not good. Uh, you know, people always ask me too, when you want to do these spins for three, four, five hours to raise money, I, I, you couldn't pay me to do that. You know, I can do it if I had to, but I don't want to do it. I don't want to, I don't want to do that to the body. It's not good. You know, and we eat correctly and everything. Me and we're training and all, why in the heck would I want to set myself up to do something like that? So, um, you got to be smart. You miss that day for whatever reason. You get back in it the next day and hit it hard. You just hit it hard, but you're in, you're out. You don't, you're not going to hang out in the gym and, because it becomes counterproductive. Address the, the mindset that people have when you're working out three days a week uh, with weight training. I'll say with, with uh, training with weights, and then maybe you're doing cardio two days a week. And taking that two days off, we know that it's, it's important that the body recovers in that time, but it's the mindset that they have to get past right. that it's okay, it's good for the body, right. 